thank you. So, hello everyone. Uh, let me welcome you on my session, which is going to be about React and how we can combine React uh, with a Life Ray uh, to make such nice applications. But before I start uh, with the presentation itself, let me say a few words about me. Uh, I'm working as a team leader and senior Java developer at Lundegaard, and I'm playing with Life Ray since version 5, so it's been quite a while when I started with the Life Ray. And I would like to just emphasize that I'm not a JavaScript geek or a React geek. I'm just focusing mainly on the Java development. But for today, yes, I'm going to talk about React and Life Ray together. But uh, the most important part, I would like to show you the concept, how we can combine these technologies together. Uh, I hope that I will give you enough detail to understand this concept. So. Let's briefly, uh, show, I, I would like to show you the agenda. Uh, I'm going to go through the motivation, show you the simplest case, how to actually, how you can combine React with Life Ray. And I would like to derive the most important stuff which you need to handle. And then I show you how we think that Life Ray should be made with Life Ray. And at the end, how we did it, how, what is the architecture of our solution. And every, as every solution, we got some pitfalls and we got some good achievements, and I would like to discuss them with you because some things are really good, some things are neat improvements. So we will we will discuss them at the end of the at the end of session. So let's start with the motivation. Uh, I divided motivation into the three parts. The first one was that. I actually changed the company two years ago, and I realized that instead of a bunch of Java developers who knows really well Spring and Spring MVC and all the, all the Java stuff, how, how to develop actually the front end on the portal 6.2, uh, now I have still have some Java developers uh, really good at the portal stuff, but I also have a lot of front end coders or a lot of UX designers, and especially a lot of JavaScript developers who wants to actually join our team to deliver the portal. But we were asking them, OK, can you do something for us on the portal? But they say, yes, we'd like to join your team, but we still want to keep writing React. We don't want to like, really bother what is the JSP code and what is the Java. We still want to focus on the, on the JavaScript. So we need to find a way how to use their full potential. Uh, the other motivation was uh, our customers, because they are asking so often, yeah, we are considering the upgrade, but we know that it will take some time. You've already heard that it's not going to be uh, done in a week. So uh, they, are, they are considering the update, but on the other hand, they still need to keep up uh, uh, actually uh, running the 6.2 or 6.2 EE, and they need to find a way how to actually deliver the applications which are easily migratable to the DXP, because they don't want to pay for the application twice. Let's say for the 6.2, and then pay another amount of money for the migration. So they are asking, are, is there any way how to create actually application which we can easily take and move it to the to the DXP. And the uh, last one, but not least, uh, I've heard it many times, we just want it. Our developers want to write React and want to be efficient on the front-end side, and also customer comes to, comes to us and say, OK, but we got a lot of React applications and React developers, but we, we, uh, we need to use our CMS and we would like to combine it somehow. Could you provide us some solution for that? And we said, yes, we need to consider it. We need to find a way how to do it. So, how we can uh, connect uh, React uh, with LifeRay in the simplest case you can ever imagine? You can just uh, download, I hope that uh, most of you know uh, very well, uh, Create React app uh, command, line, uh, command line thing. You can actually download it, uh, download it from the web, just write a, write a simple line of code, and it generates for you the basic structure of the React project. Then you just write a root component. Just write another script and build a whole application to the one JavaScript bundle. Then this bundle could be just included in the team. And the only thing you need to do is just to render some div, some place for the JavaScript application. And you can actually have a single page application in the portal. It's really simple. Just write a team, uh, create actually uh, application by using a command line interface. And it sounds, it sounds really simple, but it doesn't work because you will, you will kill the portal. 
you just don't care about the portlets. You just uh, uh, you need to think about the multiple instances of the same application on the page. You also need to think about the fact that you don't even know the number of the applications on the page in advance because you are ma managing the page. You are putting the portlets on the page, and you need to handle the things that you dynamically adding the actual React applications on the page. Another thing to consider is uh, application state. You need to handle the application state, and according to good rules, it's a good way to have only one application state for the whole page. So you need to somehow uh, handle, handle this fact too. You need to consider routing problems and efficient resource loading. So how, to, how we think if I consider these, uh, uh, these bullets and the motivation, uh, it's going to uh, show us how we, sh how we think that uh, life rate should uh, meet uh, with React. We think that the important fact is that the React developer must do what they do best. So just write the React code and don't focus on the portal integration that much. So uh, they need to be able to write at least 80% of the application without even starting the portal. And even when they need to finalize the integration with the portal and everything get up and running, they still need to have uh, uh, access to all of the features they know well, like hot model reloading and all the stuff they usually use when they are creating React application. Also, we think that the state of the whole application, even if you are using a dynamic portlet and if you are uh, putting them on the page, it should stay on the one place. It should be in the one Redux store, and you need to handle the dynamic injections of the state parts uh, inside of the one state. Also, it's really important to download only the JavaScript uh, which is necessary to render the page. So if you have a three, po if you have a three portlets on one page and just a one portlet on the second page, if you just access the page with the one portlet, you just download the JavaScript necessary to render one portlet, not the JavaScript for all of, all of the applications. Another thing which is really important, uh, Portal has quite robust CMS and quite robust configuration capabilities. And it's necessary to be able to pass the data to the React widgets and to be able to configure them and actually get different applications from the same React widgets just by, the, by the configuring them differently on the Portal. And the last... Of course, we need to consider our DS DXP migrators, so we should, be, we should be able to actually move the same JavaScript to the DXP very easily. So, how we did it. I would like to start with uh, this simplified architecture. So, just imagine that you have a portal page with uh, three portlets. Uh, portlets, uh, they are responsible for rendering I hope that you can see my mouse now. They are responsible for rendering this stuff in a JSP, and it's just a container for the application, and this is kind of configuration script tag, which actually holds the name of the component, uh, of the root component of the React. We are also passing a namespace in here to be able to render multiple instances, and then uh, we are passing a container name where we should actually render the component. Then there is, a, there is a initial data script. So if you imagine the portal page now, we have a portal page with three portlets. So it means that there will be three these uh, fr GSP fragments rendered on the page. Then uh, it comes the JavaScript part, the React Union part, scans the whole page, founds these uh, script tags, and actually injects and renders the React components into the, uh, into the divs according to the name of the root component, considering all the facts that uh, I will cover later on. And it also does the, fact, it does the thing that uh, when, when it founds the component, then it's asynchronously asked for the JavaScript uh, to be able to actually render the component. So it's downloading the resources efficiently. And the last thing, you need to include somehow the, this JavaScript part, this JavaScript bundle into the, into the application, and we are doing it uh, through the team because this is the, this is the easiest way. So let's cover uh, these parts like more in, a, more in a deep detail. The first one is a portlet part. I've already talked about <laughs> the script tag. The important thing is that we got this initial data part over there too, because this, this part is used for passing all the configuration or the portlet preferences to our widget. So if we fill in this, uh, this part in the script tag, then the React developer can actually access these, uh, uh, these things in the uh, uh, properties of the root component. 
And it's another good advantage is that it's a template. So even the React developer, if he don't know JSPs exactly, he can use it as a template, and he can easily write this, uh, this part of the JSP. And the last thing, that what I want to say, I'm showing it because I want you to understand it. We also created, we also created a JSP tag, which even simplified this, uh, this writing. So now I'm going to uh, talk about the React developer point of view, because this is, the, this is the most important stuff. We are creating actually this for them to be able to include React into the life ray. So React developer, he just write the standard uh, root component, all the container components, reducers, and the stuff he, he usually is doing. But then he needs to do two extra steps. He needs to write a Road.js file, uh, which is actually contract between the script, uh, which I've already shown you, and contract between, the, between his application. And he needs to do the entry module. So let's cover these two uh, more clearly. I hope that it's, uh, it's uh, visible. Uh, but this file, it's really important, because over there, you are saying uh, that on this path, this path it's, uh, actually matches the script tag name uh, name in the script tag, and according to this, when, when our loader found the script tag with the name web 2 call form, it searches to this road.js file, and then, according to this, he knows what to do. So he knows that he needs to inject asyn asynchronously. He needs to inject two reducers in the state, and he also knows how to actually render the component inside of the diff. So in here, we have a callback to the read component for our framework to know what components to uh, actually render into the page. And the last thing, um, I was talking about the efficient resource loading. And this is the name of the chunk, because if we don't put the portlet on the page, this chunk is not loaded, so it's not like uh, uh, it, it is using the resources efficiently. And the other part which is necessary for a JavaScript developer to write is the entry module. And the entry module is something which is defining the build, because we said that uh, we include everything in, a Java, in the team, but we need to define what is everything, what is the, uh, JavaScript, actually the JavaScript build of the application. And we will define it in here, so we can name in this array, we can name as many applications as we want it to name. And then our framework just builds through the Webpack uh, multiple JavaScript files. But these two are the most important ones, because the vendor and the entry module, these two JavaScripts, needs to be included in the team. The first one, vendor, they are just libraries like React, React Redux, and all the libraries which are actually don't write. And the second one, it's really small JavaScript. It's not like all the applications inside. There is just logic which does the, uh, which does the uh, loading of the widgets when, 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 uh, when the, actually the entry module searches for the widgets and do the asynchronous load of the rest of the JavaScripts later on based on the, what, uh, what the loader found on the page. Okay, so now let's talk about the development stuff. How actually work uh, the React developer? He has uh, something like a very similar fake portal page where he puts all the, all the script tags and he just run npm start and he can easily develop everything or everything. He can develop the application without uh, even running the portal and I think it's, it's, it's good time to actually show you something. So I just switch to my IDE <coughs> and... Hopefully, it's visible again, and I'm going to show you a few things. So uh, now imagine that uh, I'm, a, I'm a React developer. Uh, I just close all of these uh, Java stuff. I'm not going to comment the Java stuff, because uh, I think that all of you are very familiar with the portlet development and uh, with the theme development, so I will focus just on the JavaScript part. So this is the React Union part, and uh, it's a boilerplate. So I will, I will discuss it later on, but the, the JavaScript guy just needs to write a module, its application. So it's in here. So there is, a, there is the root component and there is the actual application. I'll just make it bigger. And I was talking about the local development. So if he wants to start local development, he just, he just starts the npm, npm run start. And it should be done, good. And it, uh, what it actually does, it actually starts a local development server over this file. So you can, in here, you can prepare, uh, oh, sorry, it's too small. I'll just make it bigger. 
Uh, but it's, it's just a simple static page, but you can put uh, how many script tags as you want, you want it to, and it actually loads the application according to this static page. And then if you decided to, for example, edit something, so if I go back to the, uh, to the application JS, I can easily, uh, easily edit, for example, I'll delete this, the first section with a, with a name. So if I delete it, save it, uh, the hot module reloading module should recognize it, as you can see it over here, and it's gone. So it's immediately, you don't even uh, need to reload the page. It's quite standard thing for the, for the React developer uh, for his development. What, but what we improved, and, and what I'm going to show you now, is that I also have a, I also have a portal in here, uh, up and running, sorry, not on this board, in here, hopefully, yeah. I got the same application already deployed on the, on the server, and if I, if I decided to fine-tune the application and uh, develop, it, uh, develop it with a portal, I can just use a different, uh, uh, different script, uh, like uh, this one, and if I start it, it will actually start uh, the proxy over the, over the life rate development, and I can actually do the same stuff, so just wait for a while <coughs> to, uh, to the application to start. And we should see we should see it in action. The first start take a while, but then it should be it should be really fast. So, as you can see now, uh, now I connected the uh, browser thing over the uh, over the life ray. And if I do the same thing, for example, I'll add something now. It should work too. So I just return the stuff in here, and for example, add it. Added this one. Okay, I add one more in here and change the change the name. Oh, sorry. Just a sec. So, and if I go back, I'll just wait for a while. Okay, it looks like a hiccup, so let's roll the page. Yeah, and it's it's in here, and it when I. When I delete it, it should be, it should be okay. Again, that it's uh, directly, it should disappear. Yeah, and it disappears. So you can easily, you can easily modify the fr the front end of the application even when you are running in in a final stage on the portal. Uh, what I want to also show you is how we handle the how we handle the state things because I was uh, talking about the fact that we can use uh, multiple instances on the page as you can see I have a uh, multiple instances of the application using the Redux form so even with the uh, validations as and as, as you can see I'm using the same JavaScript code but the important thing is that it's actually not influencing each other I have I have uh, two different applications in here and if I just run this uh, this console. Hopefully, I just show it to the bottom. As you can see, according to namespace, I actually separate the state on the two uh, on the two parts. So as you can see here, I have a fields filled it in in the first form, and here we go. There is a second form. So we also handle it the namespaces problem of the and, and instances problem in the Redux store. So we can dynamically inject inject our our reducers. So let's uh, let's go back to the uh, to the presentation. So uh, we did it that way, and we are saying, okay, it's working for us. But de definitely, there are some good stuff, and there are some pitfalls. So what we think that it's really achievement is that we actually got a working production build, and we managed to actually deliver the project, which was where the team was. Uh, uh, like one, only one portal specialist and like three React developers. So it's kind of, uh, kind of good thing for us. Uh, uh, we feel that uh, uh, we are really proud of the fact that uh, React developers can do what they do best. Uh, at least 80% uh, of their time and they just need to integrate with the portal at the final stage. 
Uh, we are really proud of the fact that even on the live ray portal, the hot module reloading is still working. And uh, what I haven't showed, but uh, the chunks are loaded, uh, loaded asynchronously, so we are also uh, taking into account the, uh, the efficient resource loading. And we did one POC of the migra uh, migration of our application from the 6.2 to, to the DXP, and we actually succeeded with a quite uh, uh, low, uh, quite uh, short time. But on the other hand, what we don't like or what we feel like uh, it needs to be really improved. The first one, uh, and I guess that everyone will tell me this is wrong, uh, we uh, put the dependency of our React applications in the team and actually making the portlets dependent on the team. Someone can say, okay, it's okay, but we feel like, okay, it's not gonna, it's, it's not a good approach. So we already managed to uh, get rid of this dependency and we used the OSGI model with the AMD loader and we managed to actually load our scripts through the OSGI module and through the AMD, which is, which is available in the live ray. The second uh, very big, not, not big problem, but at least for if you want to work, cooperate with, uh, multi, in a multi-vendor environment, so with uh, multiple vendors, you will re realize that it's a not good idea to give them a boilerplate with a lot of folders when they need to search the right place where to put the application. So we are, uh, so we are thinking, okay, we need to change this, because it's not a good idea to just, just send you a zip and say, let's start with this. And yeah, feel, uh, we feel that that uh, the bootstrapping code and uh, all the code which is handling the script acts and uh, asynchronous loading and injecting of the of the reducers uh, dynamically into the store, it should be like separated from the application itself. So that's why we that's why we prepared a concept or we are working on a concept we call it Union Two, and our main goal was simplify development even more and just to make make it clear uh, dependencies between modules. And we found a way how to do it. We actually completely separate all of the stuff like bootstrapping. Uh, we also added a command line uh, interface support. And we separate it to the different uh, NPM packages. And from our new point of view, uh, the React developer just received the folder where he just writes a widget. And he just receives a one uh, configuration file where he just say, OK, and this is the way how you should register my widget in the application. And that's it. And the rest of it, uh, all the code is just in a separate NPM packages. And if he wants to develop multiple multiple widgets at a time, we found out the, that uh, Learner.js is a really good tool because it actually allows you to develop multiple separate NPM packages together in a one hot, mod hot module reloading cycle. So even if you separate it on the NPM packages, you can still work as I, uh, as I showed before. <coughs> Another huge improvement, or we feel that it's a kind of big improvement, is that we started to use React portals. So in the previous example, I've shown you that we have a multiple applications, and each application is, has its own virtual DOM and has its own root component. But, in, but uh, if you use React portals, you can have just one root component, and it's more efficient uh, in a way that browser handles all the events and this stuff. And the last, uh, last uh, point, which is really important, we let more developers to start, uh, uh, start it from the beginning. So we are trying to do it by doing extreme programming. So they are discussing every, uh, every decision uh, when they are preparing the union. Too. So I hope that it's going to be, it's gonna be perfect. No, not perfect, but it's going to be definitely better. So uh, let me sum it up. Uh, the whole presentation. Uh, I would like to say that uh, now we got a working production build where, uh, where we run React and LifeRay together and it's working perfectly, customer is satisfied. We have also a project on the DXP, but this one is quite heavy one and it's running for more than six months and hopefully we will deliver it next year. We feel that uh, using React, especially for the application development or for the widget development to the CMS, is definitely faster than just doing it by, by the JSPs, especially if you have a React developers in your company. So it's definitely a good uh, way to consider. 
And we are proud of the fact that we still kept the base uh, portlet concept because I've seen a many implementation of AngularJS or ReactJS on the portal, but it ends up like you have just one single page application and you actually degrade the LifeRay portal to the something which serves static content. And we didn't do that. We follow the uh, portlet principles. We still can use a portlet, so we are kind of proud of the fact that we keep, uh, keep these main principles uh, in here. And yeah, uh, we realized that uh, it's uh, on this big project, we are using four React developers and just one portal specialist, and it's working perfectly. So we feel that we can, we can like, uh, change, the, uh, change the structure of our team very easily. And yeah, we, we manage the POC between, uh, uh, which is migrating 6.2 to DXP very easily, but I must say that we also consider some changes on the, in the backend logic, so we separated backend logic from the LifeRay itself. So it's not only about LifeRay, but the, uh, only about React, but React helps a lot. So based on these points, I think that uh, LifeRay should meet with React more often, and we are gonna push it, and we hope that it's gonna work in the future too. So, thank you, and now it's time for questions. Uh, yeah, it's, that's, a, that's a very good question. Not yet, but uh, because we are not, uh, we haven't open sourced it yet. But I was discussing this with our technical uh, CTO, and he said, "Okay, I think that's that's a good way." And we were discussing it like uh, the presentation before. It should be open source, so I hope that we're gonna do it in in a few weeks, hopefully. I I think we still have time for one or two more questions, so. Uh, I have a question. Do you maybe have some examples, or um, did you uh, try to do this? I mean, um, including React as uh, um, a dependency, which is loaded by AMD uh, module loader in Life 7 Because I had some troubles with this, and I had I had to find. Yeah, we actually we actually managed. Uh, I commented, but maybe uh, maybe I wasn't so clear. We put it into the team because it's easier migratable from 6.2 to DXP. But uh, uh, our last customer, he was asking for a better solution, and even we received some feedback from the different colleagues from different companies. And we managed to put the JavaScript into one OSGI module, which is loaded by AMD, and it's actually working. So it's possible. It's definitely working. That's great. And do you have any examples, or I don't know? Uh, right now, it's not it's not in the public repository, but we got an example, and I can I can show you after the presentation. That's great, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It's really cool. Uh, Welcome. <laughs> my question would be: um, How much code do the two portlets there share from uh, the base React code? Is that they are just like namespaced and completely independent, or is it just like a page React aware, and the two portlets then just uh, take the parts that are different? I'm not sure if I get right your question, but you are asking how many code we need to write to be able to run the whole thing, or no? I mean that you have a React base, right? Do you load the React uh, twice? No, 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 just. Is it just once? Yeah, loaded? yeah, yeah, yeah. I got your question now. Uh, we actually create the build, which is in the vendor JS. There is just one React, one everything, one all like ri library. So one Redux, uh, one Redux up in middleware, and then at the theme level, right? At, at the theme level, yeah. And if you do that uh, by the AMD, who is uh, when the colleague is asking, it's only loaded once too. So, so what would it's be, just once on the page. All right. So what would be the, the difference if that wasn't React, then let's say it was Angular? Uh, yeah, it's going to work with Angular too, but you need to handle the same steps we did actually in our framework. So you need to write your logic how to scan the tags. You need to write a logic which actually renders the Angular application inside of the, inside of the, inside of the div. 
Thank you. Actually, actually, we got one project where other colleagues are uh, trying to play with the AngularJS and they are doing something similar, but it's not like uh, real production ready yet. Got one.